Tonight on Cronkite News, the start of the monsoon season officially begins today. What local officials say we can do to prepare and stay safe. Plus, Arizona politicians play ball in a bipartisan tradition where both sides of the aisle come together. And find out what's new for two Arizona college basketball programs this fall. News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News. I'm Erin Patterson. Thank you for joining us. Folks here in the Valley are very familiar with our summer monsoon storms and the season officially begins today. It's pretty dry out there so far, but local officials want you to be ready when the next big one hits. Bree Pacelli joins us now to tell us how we can all stay safe. If you've lived through a monsoon here in Arizona, you know they can be frightening. In fact, according to the National Weather Service, as a monsoon arrives, there's an increased threat of lightning that could cause wildfires. That's why the city of Phoenix wants you to be prepared these next upcoming months starting today. Today, several city organizations such as the Phoenix Parks and Recreations Forestry Division and the city's water services department demonstrated a variety of things you can do to stay safe. One way to prepare is to cut any dead, diseased, or cross branches from your trees so it is able to withstand the wind and rain and keep it from falling on your house or your car. Today, we also saw how the Phoenix Water Services Department keeps the drains clear when heavy rain begins. They showed us two rovers, which are used to inspect storm drains throughout the city to ensure only water is flowing through them. Before the monsoon season comes, we we send out our, our, our crews to maintain the storm drains. We send out this uh, vector here that we have to uh, clean any clogged drains or any debris that are in the storm drains in the streets to make sure that the, the water is flowing the way it should be so that when the, the, the rain comes, it doesn't flood our streets. One other tip during a monsoon is to make sure your trash makes it in the bin and not on the streets because otherwise it'll end up clogging the drains of the city, causing flooding. In Phoenix, Bree Pacelli, Cronkite News. The Supreme Court has upheld a law today which gives priority to Native Americans when adopting Native children. The court ruled 7-2 preserving the 1978 Indian Child Welfare Act, originally put in place over concerns that Native children were being separated from their families and frequently placed in non-Native homes. But some argued the system was based on race, but the Supreme Court disagreed. When it comes to the future of education, Arizona has set a goal for 60% of the state's residents to have obtained a college degree by 2030. But as Alexandria Cullen tells us, Arizona is nowhere near that goal. That's right. The goal was set in place by Arizona's previous governor, Doug Ducey, along with several other organizations back in 2016. But 2030 is now just seven years away, so several groups are bringing attention to how far behind we are. A recent poll conducted by Center for the Future of Arizona shows that Arizonans place education as their number one issue. The statistics, however, don't sound as convincing, as just under half of the state residents between the ages of 25 and 64 have earned a degree or certificate. We are well below our own statewide goal of ensuring that at least 60% of Arizona adults have a post-secondary degree or credential by the end of the decade. To reach the statewide goal called Achieve 60 AZ, organizations like Education Forward Arizona launched a campaign called Everything to Gain, designed to ensure the message increasing degree and certificate attainment is imperative. When it comes to helping individuals obtain degrees, Dr. Kimberly Britt, president of Phoenix College, said part of the challenge is creating access to education for all. We must work together to increase this access, this opportunity, and to begin to transform lives. To lead by example, a recent ASU graduate spoke about the impact obtaining a degree had on both him and his family. This degree and certification is not mine alone, but I like to say that it's my siblings as well, it's my family's, it's my community, it's ours. But the goal isn't just to benefit students. Increasing education and training beyond high school could increase success in Arizona's workforce and economy. In the newsroom, Alexandria Cullen, Cronkite News. Congressmen set aside the politics and picked up their bats as they faced off last night in the annual congressional baseball game. Shelley Garzone reports from our Washington Bureau. 
Democrats battling Republicans is hardly a surprise here in Washington, but for one night, it's less of a battle and more of a friendly game. The bipartisan game is a tradition in Washington dating back over 100 years. More than 26,000 fans filled Nationals Park to cheer on their favorite lawmakers at the game, which raised $1.8 million for local charities. It's a camaraderie, camaraderie not just with my Democratic teammates, who are some of the best members of Congress, really good people, but a chance to kind of have a little fun with the Republicans, too. So it's all in good, good-natured fun, and hopefully we'll have a good, safe, fun, close game tonight. Stanton, who played third base for the Democrats, was one of three Arizona congressmen in the game. Phoenix Representative Ruben Gallego was on the Democratic team, and Tucson Congressman Juan Siscomani suited up for the GOP. It was Siscomani's first game, but a repeat performance for Gallego and Stanton. Gallego says this is more than just a friendly game of baseball. Well, it's a really good way for you to meet some of your colleagues outside of the committee room, both Democrats and Republicans. So it's a very good way to build relationships, uh, to really you know, get to know somebody at the human level, not just a, as, as a bunch of politicians. While the mood was friendly on the field, partisanship was alive and well in the stands, where fans were divided in two sections, one for Republicans and one for Democrats. Like all the Republicans, Siskamani wore a red GOP uniform, but the Democrats wore uniforms representing teams back home. Both Stanton and Gallego wore jerseys from Arizona high schools. As someone who's running statewide and trying to represent the whole state, I think it's important that every part of the state gets a little piece of representation here. That's why I'm wearing the Tucson uh, Badgers jersey as well as the Arizona Diamondbacks hat. After being shut out by the Republicans 10 to nothing last year, Stanton said Democrats had a different strategy coming into this year's game. We're going to actually try to make contact with the ball this year. <laughs> that would be different. <laughs> it was a rough year, but we'll, we'll come back a little bit. We'll play a little better this year. Just because it's a friendly game doesn't mean they don't compete. And Republicans this year got the best of the competition, jumping to an early lead and defeating the Democrats. In Washington, Shelly Garzone, Cronkite News. A new college basketball tournament is coming to Desert Diamond Arena in Glendale this fall. NAU and GCU will be participating in the inaugural Arizona tip-off tournament at the start of the basketball season. The tournament will be split up into two four-team brackets. In the Cactus Division, South Carolina, DePaul, San Francisco, and GCU will be playing. NAU, South Dakota, Purdue, Fort Wayne, and the Virginia Military Institute will be playing in the Desert Division. This event will take place from November 17th through the 19th. Coming up next, we take an inside look at the Arizona Rattlers. We will see what the Rattlers need to do to keep up their win streak. And it is heating up just in time for Father's Day this weekend. Stick around to find out just how hot it's going to get. ASU's one and only student-run radio station, Blaze Radio, provides students with opportunities to cover a variety of topics. From music, this is Sun City Garage, to sports coverage, against the Brewers in his last outing, he went to news, the bill also gives parents the ability to see, and entertainment updates. Blaze Radio offers a fun environment to gain valuable broadcast experience. To find out more, visit blazeradioonline.com. General Manager of Arizona PBS. We've got so much going on here at the station. I'm Catherine Anaya. I'm Alberto Rios. I'm Chef Mark Tarbell. I'm Ted Simons. We want everyone to know that their Arizona connection starts right here at Arizona PBS. For over the past 60 years, Arizona PBS has told incredible stories of Arizona's distinctive people. We got to start being more vulnerable with each other. What I love most about being a Latina woman is the passion and drive that I feel. Beautiful landscapes and treasured history. We're doing something that benefits the community. Good evening and welcome to Orizante. Welcome to Check, Please, Arizona. Welcome to the U.S. Senate debate. The recipient of the Emmy is... Arizona PBS.
Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communications Phoenix Sports Bureau provides students with hands-on learning experiences and opportunities in sports journalism. From covering local high schools, colleges, and the pros, students get the opportunity to go live from our Facebook shows covering local, collegiate, and pro sports in the Valley. From digital reporting, broadcast, social media, and producing, there's opportunities for all. For more, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. The Arizona Rattlers are one of the hottest teams in the indoor football league, rolling on a four-game win streak. But that doesn't mean it'll be an easy ride into the playoffs. Our Crystal Stone is live in the newsroom to share what could threaten the Rattlers' quest for another IFL title. That's right, Aaron. The Arizona Rattlers have one of the top offenses in the IFL, averaging nearly 55 points per game this season. But with the good comes the bad, and the Rattlers have some cleaning up to do on the other side of the ball. While the Rattlers' offense has gained the most yards in the IFL so far, of the league's 14 teams, their defense is ranked 11th, allowing nearly, nearly 50 points per game. Coach Kevin Guy says starting the season with a newly constructed defensive unit has been a challenge, and it'll take some time to get everyone on the same page. Our defense is, is really brand new. I mean, the only guys we got back from last year are Winfrey and, and Merriweather. We, we brought Chris Terrell in at the end of the season last year. So, I mean, we rebuilt our whole defense, and they're just going through some growing pains. Now, with just four games left in the regular season, there isn't much room for error, and three of the Rattlers' four losses have come on the road, making this Sunday's matchup against the Duke City Gladiators in Albuquerque one to watch. From the newsroom, Crystal Stone, Cronkite News. Phoenix Rising will be without the services of their team captain, who is currently on international duty with Jamaica. He will be missing Saturday's game against Louisville City FC and possibly next Wednesday against New Mexico United. Kevin Lambert has been a staple in the Rising's team since moving to the club in 2017, and he has held the captain's armband for a majority of games this season. Lambert, who's in Austria with the Jamaican national team in preparation for the Gold Cup, may miss an entire month if he makes the final roster. While it's a great opportunity for the rising defender, the team will miss his leadership and versatility. So it's always like a, a great feeling to get called up and whenever I get called up, I'm excited and ready to go and represent. As a club, we're extremely proud of Kevin. We wish him obviously nothing but uh, the best of success uh, with Jamaica this week. But obviously, Kev is a, is a big piece of the team. He's a team captain. Um, he's a, a leader with the group. And so, obviously, we'll miss him. But I think as far as the rest of the team goes, it's a great opportunity for other leaders, which we certainly have in the team, to step up. With the 2023 CONCACAF Gold Cup scheduled to start on June 24th in the United States and Canada, the Jamaican squad will be announced soon, and Lambert is hoping he will be on that final 23-man squad. Well, the weekend is almost here, but it's going to be a toasty one. Alexandria Cullen joins us now to tell us how hot it's going to get. As we look at our evening planner, 7.30 currently, 97 degrees. But as we head later into the evening here by 10 o'clock, it'll be 89, a gradual 10 degree decrease. A little bit cooler out there for you. And as we look at our future cast tonight, around 11.30 up near the northern region of Arizona and the Grand Canyon, we're gonna see some rain and showers. And as the remainder of the weekend goes on, our Saturday and Sunday, we're gonna see some cloud coverage coming up through the southern range and into Phoenix. Our low temperatures, however, 38 near the Grand Canyon, 75 in Phoenix, and 68 in Tucson. But our highs, Grand Canyon will see 75, 104 hitting that triple digit number in Phoenix, and the hundreds as well for the remainder of that southern region of Arizona. As we head into our eight day forecast, Friday, 103, Saturday, 104, but the day that you're all waiting for, Sunday, 107 degrees, so if you're looking to do any type of grilling, make sure to do it early. And looking at the rest of our week here, we're gonna see Monday, 104, Tuesday, where we're gonna get some extra cloud coverage, 102, and Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 104 and 105, respectively. From the Cronkite Weather Center, I'm Alexandria Cullen. ASU Tennis is on a roll after finishing the season undefeated at home. And one of the star players on the team isn't only an ace on the court, but also on the stage. We'll meet her next.
KSU's one and only student-run radio station, Blaze Radio, provides students with opportunities to cover a variety of topics. From music, this is Sun City Garage, to sports coverage, against the Brewers in his last outing, he went to news, the bill also gives parents the ability to see, and entertainment updates. Blaze Radio offers a fun environment to gain valuable broadcast experience. To find out more, visit blazeradioonline.com. General Manager of Arizona PBS. We've got so much going on here at the station. I'm Catherine Anaya. I'm Alberto Rios. I'm Chef Mark Tarbell. I'm Ted Simons. We want everyone to know that their Arizona connection starts right here at Arizona PBS. For over the past 60 years, Arizona PBS has told incredible stories of Arizona's distinctive people. We got to start being more vulnerable with each other. What I love most about being a Latina woman is the passion and drive that I feel. Beautiful landscapes and treasured history. We're doing something that benefits the community. Good evening and welcome to Orizante. Welcome to Check, Please, Arizona. Welcome to the U.S. Senate debate. The recipient of the Emmy is... Arizona PBS. The Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communications Phoenix Sports Bureau provides students with hands-on learning experiences and opportunities in sports journalism. From covering local high schools, colleges, and the pros, students get the opportunity to go live from our Facebook shows covering local, collegiate, and pro sports in the Valley. From digital reporting, broadcast, social media, and producing, there's opportunities for all. For more, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. ASU women's tennis is on a break for the summer, but they are coming off one of their best seasons with an undefeated home record and a run to the NCAA tournament. They also got a big boost from a freshman who, as Cronkite News reporter Jonah Krell tells us, can sing as well as she can swing. For an 18-year-old, let's just say Chelsea Fontenelle has done a lot. The Sun Devil tennis player has competed in all four junior Grand Slams and started off her freshman season with an 11-0 record. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. This girl is on fire. We're Made our friendship that's right, Chelsea sings. And it's not just a side hustle. It all sparked when the Swiss native performed on Germany's The Voice Kids at just eight years old and became a viral sensation. But beyond that, she's now producing her own singles, all while pursuing her tennis career. I think it's just my passion. Like, it's something I was born with. I mean, ever since I could remember, um, I was, like, dancing to, like, Shakira tracks in my room and probably singing before I could even really start talking properly. Of course, Chelsea also swings, and she hasn't disappointed in Tempe. She finished the regular season at 15-5 and five in singles play and was ranked the 104th best singles player in the country by the Intercollegiate Tennis Association. So what's underneath all of the success? Ah! Her sheer competitiveness. The sport itself is beautiful, and then it's even more beautiful when you win at the end. So. <laughs> it's just gratifying, you know, like nobody really wants to lose. So some people just don't really want to admit it. Chelsea makes it sound so simple, but she's not alone. She's reached these early accomplishments partly because of her teammates, something she didn't have on the junior circuit. On the bad days or like the harder days, it's even easier a little bit to push through just because now I have teammates and like we're all sort of in this together and then I'm sort of reminding myself that I'm also doing it for them too. And Chelsea pushes herself off the court as a popular music major at ASU. She makes the commute to the downtown Phoenix campus where she gets to write songs, produce music and have voice lessons all for class. Her doubles partner Mariana Argiro Castridi isn't one bit surprised about the freshman's balancing act. Honestly, if you give her another a full-time job right now, I'm pretty sure she could do everything. She says that organized, determined, and passionate about everything she does. So she can literally do whatever she, she wants. Multitasking can be difficult for some people, but for Chelsea, 
It's like an easy slam at the net. And she's not limiting herself to just the mic or the match. She plans on making a career out of both. It's never over until the last point is played. You always got a chance. What are you chasing in the future? You know, what, what are your goals, both tennis and, and singing? So my, my dream essentially is, has always been to become the first singing tennis player because A, this has never existed, and B, it's sort of like, for me, music and sport is like such a good balance. And through it all, Chelsea's coaches have played an important role in her ability to keep this balance as they support their players doing things off the court to keep a healthy mindset. There's a lot of, uh, you, you know, maybe pressure for these student athletes. Um, just managing all that is, is not always an easy thing. So I think, you know, fi finding time to do things that they enjoy and that they're good at and they're passionate about um, off the tennis court is, is also really good to, to help them play good tennis. Chelsea plans to focus on tennis into her pro career with music on the side. And once it's time to hang it all up, she will have her voice for a second life. But for now, it's quite simple. I've been doing both, so I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> In Tempe, Jonah Krell, Cronkite Sports. One of the most successful high school quarterbacks in Arizona started his college career off at BYU. But now he's headed back to Arizona State to play for the Sun Devils. We catch up with Jacob Conover next. On Masterpiece Mystery. Evil can find its roots so easily in an English village. The landscape of criminal investigation. Murder, almost certainly. Modern policing methods. We endeavor to do our best. We're working hard to solve this case. And to make sure justice gets done. It's a new adventure. And the rest, as they say, is mystery. I can hardly wait. Best of PBS on any device with the PBS video app. All your favorite drama, history, science, news, and documentaries all in one place. Watch your PBS station live or catch up on the shows you missed. Discover new favorites from PBS and locally produced shows from your station. Sign in and start streaming today. There was a lot of activity in the transfer portal for ASU football this offseason, including the addition of one of the most successful high school quarterbacks in State 48 history. Cronkite sports reporter Nick Hogan has more on if the former three-time state champ will take over in Tempe. When you talk about the history of high school football in Arizona, you need to mention the name of quarterback Jacob Conover. Conover was a standout for the Chandler Wolves where he threw for more than 10,000 yards and 102 touchdowns while winning three straight state championships. Now the redshirt sophomore returns to Arizona to suit up for the Sun Devils. It's great to be back here. Um, you know, it's, there's some change, um, but I'm loving transition. Conover spent the last three years at BYU before transferring to ASU in December where he's now reunited with his high school coach, Sean Aguano, who is the Sun Devils running backs coach? You know, having someone that has seen me play and is confident in my abilities was a huge factor. And, you know, Coach Iguano is always going to be honest with me no matter what. And... Iguano is not the only Sun Devil who recalls Conover's Chandler days. Fellow ASU quarterback and former Marana High School standout Trenton Borgay also has a history with the fellow signal caller. 
We never played tackle, but we did play him in seven on seven. I actually played him and Coach Iguano, and we ended up beating them, let's just say that. We do the most trash talking as Chandler boys just because we ran the state for a while. And so, especially with Coach Iguano, he's here to back us up, but it's been fun. Some good arguments. There's plenty of on the field factors that have led Conover to Tempe, but the off the field factors have played a role as well. Returning home applies to football and family. It's really awesome. You know, I have four younger sisters, and so just to be back as kind of an older brother again is uh, super fun to be with my family, see my parents, and, you know, just be back in the Valley. This summer, Conover has established his mindset in regards to the quarterback battle. You know, just personal improvements. You know, um, I think Springer's just a showcase. They haven't na named a starter at all. So everyone's just going to put their head down and go to work. In Tempe, Nick Hogan, Cronkite Sports. Well, that's it for Cronkite News, and thanks for joining us. To see top Arizona stories anytime, log on to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.